Hi right, guys, welcome to part five. I think I'm done with the first phase of this thing. Uh, this is actually my first print in a calibration cube. So I just want to see like how this thing reacts. Like, see that belt's twisting right there? I gotta figure that out. Uh, yeah, okay, I think I need more tension on that belt. Huh? It's pretty tight already. So now I just gotta figure out the little issues with it. So I got all the bed leveling done. Did that in part four, like the Z axis. Alright, so I got the fan coming in. Let's see my fan. The layer fan, or the uh, part cooling fan is on. I do have a height map. So my bed must be pretty pretty flat. I got a must, must have a dial in pretty flat because this thing is not moving. It's not compensating. Okay. Alright, so once I get all the kinks worked out, then I'll upgrade it, upload it to Thingiverse. Because I don't want you guys to build a printer like this if it's not going to be perfect. Um, yeah, see how the belts are moving back and forth again? I'm going to figure that out. Is it just the length? Or maybe they're just not straight. Um... Okay, just some of the few minor things I gotta work out. So this is just the first phase of it. I really don't have any powerful like motors here in X and Y. So uh, the next phase, it's gonna be, you know, like once I get everything dialed in, I'm gonna go crazy speed with this thing. So I might have to add some more supports to it. Um, yeah, my cover to the camera thing actually works. Like I said, future future things I may do I might do quad quad level uh, bed leveling or bed tramming bed leveling whatever we call it. All right, I can't believe this thing actually works. I have so many hours in this thing, you know, so many fails. Here's the fail box. <laughs> fail box is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. yeah, those are all the parts that didn't work. All right. I think awesome, man. I'm excited. It's my uh, first Core XY that I've actually personally owned. Um, and this, this originally started off as a Solo S, SV-1, I think. Like the box down below here. But I do actually have some pretty cool stuff. I got this, uh, I made our video about this. I got the, uh, I mean, nobody had really done a review on this 2240s. Those are new. Internal temp sensors. So I have Monster 8. So I'm already thinking quad bed, quad bed leveling here. But. All right, we'll see how this calibration cube will come, or how it prints out, and we'll come back. Yeah, I forgot to say on my on my first print, um, I'm only running 60, speed of 60, layer height of one. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't want to go completely crazy with it until I uh, get everything figured out. All right, still doing the first print, but I think... Uh, I, I can see what's actually happening. See, it's not, well, maybe you can't see in the video, but it's sort of curved down again. I think the pressure, I need to have a more stable way of creating belt tension. It seems like it wants to push them forward. So the belt wants to ride on the top of the pulley. And I think that's what's making the thing go like this. You know, that's why the belt is not going back and forth straight. It's kind of wanting to curve like that. So, uh, yeah, and that's to be the next. I'm gonna address that pretty much maybe tonight. Because I'm actually I'm planning on getting some really big, big motors back here, so that might generate a lot of heat. So I might machine something maybe out of aluminum, maybe maybe go to like, get like an L bracket, maybe machine it something that's super strong. But the problem is most people, um, if you were gonna, I mean, most people don't actually have these machines in their garage, so they can't machine aluminum. So maybe I'll design. Something out of plastic, but more stable. Or have an aluminum version and a plastic version of it. All right. So I went the first print, so I think I might do another one, double the speed. I mean, obviously I'm having issues with the belt alignment, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, wow. I mean, that, I mean, I don't. I this is no calibration or nothing. That looks pretty good. Let's take a look at here. Same thing I gotta deal with. Um, it's actually not that big of a deal, but 
here and let it cool off. Um, okay, maybe if I get bigger motors. Like I said, originally the idea was to go to quad motor, but um, even if I got a little bit thicker motors, like 39 millimeter motors, um, yeah, the extra tension in the, in the spring would keep this up. So, um, you know, obviously there's more resistance. The, the magnets are bigger. So it's harder to overcome. It would overcome the resistance. Um, okay, let me, uh, we'll do your print. Higher speed. Let's see this. So if I get to clean my workbench off, all right, that's the very first print. Like all the stuff is brand new, so it needs to be worked in. You know, like all the bearings and stuff and on your rails. So like a layer shift. Like I said, I haven't done any sort of input shaping or any of that kind of stuff yet. So no tuning at all. I'm only running at 60. But, um, anyway, I'm running a faster one at 120. Let's see what happens. Alright, let's step to the speed. 120. I think I have 60 on the outside walls. And then 120 on the inside. Alright, so it's way faster. Obviously it amplifies the issue with the, uh, the belt uh, alignment here. So I just got to make sure that goes up further. Alright. That's 120 millimeter. That's 60 millimeter. Really, there's actually like no difference in them. Alright, still testing this thing. Made some improvements. So I guess this is part five still. Um, let me show you what I did here. I guess the belts are kind of flipping around everywhere. Um, Plus, at the speeds I want to push this thing, um, I do actually have some LDL motors coming in, high power motors in, 2.8 amp. Um, yeah, I actually made it a lot more rigid back here. See how this 2020 rail comes back here to keep them, because I wanted to kind of collapse in on themselves. Um, actually, it was fine. I mean, it kind of worked on low speed. Um, but for the amount of speed I want to push this thing in, I had more stability back here. Um, Couple different ways I was thinking about doing that. I, mean, I originally decided the 2020 rail, but originally I was going to maybe put it up here this way. Yeah, mount it to the top 2020 rail. So this is 120 millimeters a second. Okay, right, so let's take a look at it. I'm still, I got my uh, RGB lights on here, but then it burned out my buck converter because I have so many LEDs. Um, so I have to figure that out. I think I'm just going to convert like an AC adapter. So instead of trying to run off the 24 volt power supply, I'm just going to run it on AC. Um, just because the thing actually probably, with that many LEDs, it probably puts out a lot, so. And, um, future videos, I might put like a, make, maybe create like a GitHub page for this thing or something. So you guys, actually, I can upload the step files. So if you want to modify the design or whatever. Um, instead of just uploading an STL on Thingiverse. Um, I might create like a bottom cage for this, maybe move the LCD so it's not right. I mean, it's nice having it right in your face, I guess, but it's also at the same time, it kind of impedes your view a little bit. Depends where you have, how high you have this thing mounted, but um, yeah, I have this thing on my Mac toolbox here. Um, uh, yeah, because I had to let all that belt slop. I think it was actually messing with the quality of the, uh, the cubes. So I'm actually going to probably machine a bunch of stuff out of aluminum. Like, I have a hot-end design I'm thinking about that I'm probably going to be using this thing right here. See the indexer back there? You know, the fourth axis, this thing, or, or that machine. I have a fourth axis on, on that one, too. All right, guys. Cool. Having fun.